Heidi Gunal is the GOP's gubernatorial nominee in the state of Colorado, and much like her GOP peers, she's trying to gin up hysteria over what's happening in schools. But unlike her GOP peers, she's not necessarily hyper-focusing on CRT or LGBTQ plus books that she wants to ban. Rather, she's focusing on cats, or should I say students that she is alleging are identifying as cats. And to make matters worse, schools, 30 of which her campaign has identified, are accommodating these cat-identified students, according to her. Now, it's not happening, obviously, but this is what she says, according to LGBTQ Nation, who reports in a radio interview last week, Ganal said that schools are tolerating students identifying as cats. She said in a recent debate with gay incumbent Governor Jared Polis that she had received over 100 messages from parents across Colorado mentioning the issue in their schools. Her campaign also released a list of 30 schools where such issues had allegedly occurred, though the list didn't detail specifics about the incidents themselves, the Denver Post reported. Quote, as a candidate for governor, but more than anything as a parent, my concern is that distractions like children dressing up in costumes at school detract from the reality that 60% of our kids are not performing at grade level, Ganal said. It's tragic that we are failing our children. We need to make them our priority. Now, it's ironic that she says that because rather than proposing solutions, Solutions to improve the Colorado school system rather than trying to allocate more resources to teachers so that way they're not having to use their own resources to purchase school supplies. She's simply just trying to gin up outrage about something that's not even happening in schools. Now, on September 6th, uh, 6th I actually posted a really lengthy video talking about a relatively similar myth to this. Now, to my knowledge, Ganal has not explicitly claimed that Schools are going so far as to accommodate cat-identified students by placing litter boxes in restrooms. However, I do believe that what she's saying stems from that original conspiracy theory. Now, I'll link you to my full coverage of this down below, but if you don't want to watch that and you just want the TLDR version, this myth essentially originated from this December 2021 uh, video posted by Midland Public Schools. Yesterday, I heard something um, and I was stunned. And today I am equally stunned and a little bit upset. Well, not a little bit, a lot of bit upset, furious. I, don't, I would even use that word. But um, I want to talk to about the fact that, and I know this is going on nationwide, so it is not just for your, for this board, but our community needs to understand that the agenda that is being pushed through our schools is um, just my opinion but somewhat nefarious when it comes to some of the um, activities. So let's talk about fury, furries. <laughs> it was addressed by a child uh, a couple months ago that they are put in an environment where there are kids that, are, that identify as a furry, a cat or a dog, whatever. And so yesterday I heard that at least one of our schools in our town has a, in one of the unisex bathrooms a litter box for the kids that identify as cats. And um, I am really disturbed by that. And I, I will do some more investigation on that. I know it's going on nationwide. I know it is. It's part of the agenda that's being pushed. I don't, I don't even want to understand it. But I think that people need to be aware of it because I am really upset as a parent that my child is put in an environment like that. So because one concerned parent in Michigan claimed that she heard one school put litter boxes in the restrooms, well, that went viral. It blew up. Libs of TikTok shared it. And then the conspiracy theories sort of died down within a couple of months after the schools came out and said, no, this is not happening. But the myth kept getting revived because presumably somebody saw that video again for the first time. They echo that same claim on social media. That claim then blows up and goes viral. And that's the new evidence that this is happening again. And this is how the myth keeps getting revived. Politicians are echoing the same claim and it just, it won't die. It's like a fucking cockroach. Now, I think that that is essentially where Ganala is getting this. And I don't doubt that parents are sending her concerns about students identifying as cats. I, I just think that it's stemming from this whole conspiracy theory. Now, this is not happening. It's not happening. And it doesn't seem like Ganal is curious enough to investigate herself. She's just taking these parents' word. And rather than contacting school officials, because this is a potential governor, she's just repeating what they're saying. 
It's ridiculous. And of course, schools once again have had to come out and state the obvious. No, there are not students who are identifying as cats and we're not trying to accommodate said students who are identifying as cats. It's so preposterous. The Denver Post explains officials for Denver Public Schools, Cherry Creek Schools, Aurora Public Schools, and Colorado Springs School District 11 all denied having any issues with students dressing up as cats or other animals. Two statewide organizations representing teachers and administrators criticized Ganahl's claims and said they had never been made aware of such issues either. Randy Barber, a spokesman for Boulder Valley School District, which is in Included on a list Gunal's campaign provided of schools where his students dress like animals, said he was unaware of any such issues. Quote, the concerns being generated by the Republican gubernatorial candidate are baseless, he said. The claims are exhausting for educators, said Brett Miles, the executive director of Colorado Association of School Executives. His group, along with the Colorado Education Association, described the claims as false. Both groups said no educator, administrator, or district had ever reported issues similar to Gunal's claims. Now, that same individual who was just quoted went on to make a really good point. He said, look, we are just trying our best to give students some semblance of normalcy after living through two years of a pandemic, which is still going on. But, you know, schools are back open and we're trying to make things the best that we can do. Right. And we have to take time out of our day to investigate these claims and then report back to parents when they're false. They're bullshit. And yeah, so all of these conservatives who are complaining about the lack of in-person learning throughout the pandemic. Now, when school is back in session across the country, they're making matters worse by coming up with these bogus claims, by not even trying to investigate this themselves. I mean, if you're a parent and you hear this claim on social media, what's stopping you from calling the school? You are a parent. You can call the schools. You don't have to just echo the same thing that you hear on social media. Ask them. I'm sure that they'll talk to you. I'm sure the principal or whoever will say, Okay, well, you know, I haven't seen this, but we'll look into it and we'll get back to you. They're willing to work with you, but they just don't want to do that. They just repeat what they hear, and it's like a game of conspiracy theory telephone. Now, some of the school districts who were involved, who were on that list that Ganahl's campaign put out, they were trying to do their best. They said, look, okay, some students were wearing headbands with cat ears, but that's just like the style. They they sell headphones um, with cat ears. That doesn't mean that they're identifying as cats, nor does it mean that the school is going out of their way to provide litter boxes for students who wear headbands with cat ears. I mean, it's a, it's a non-issue. It's, it's a nothing burger. And another school district was like, well, I mean, we did have to ban students from wearing dog collars because that kind of became a thing. It was their style in the school. But I mean, the fact that they banned dog collars should prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that they're absolutely not trying to accommodate students who are identifying as cats and dogs. Look, in my main, my main video where I, I talked about this, go watch it. I explain how this is all hysteria primarily over trans issues, right? Because the whole joke on the right with comedians and whatnot is that if I can be a girl, if I was born a boy, then I can identify as anything, including an Apache attack helicopter. So what's stopping students from identifying as non-human species? And it's just not true. By trying to pretend as if students are identifying as cats, well, this further legitimizes this hysteria over trans issues because, well, you know, maybe your kid isn't trans, but maybe they're a trans species is, and they're identifying as cats and ignorant conservatives take that as evidence that we should hide away trans people because they're influencing our children to become cats when it's just not happening. So once again, this story has popped up. It had to be debunked. And I'm sure within a couple of months, once again, we'll, we'll hear from a Republican who says, I heard that there's litter boxes in restrooms at one school. Like it's not going to die. It's not going to go away. It's going to keep happening and schools are going to have to continue to respond to this bird brain claim that cats in schools or that students in schools are identifying as cats on its face. These parents should be smart enough, have at least enough common sense to assume seems a little bit implausible. But if I care enough, I'll look into it. But that's not happening. And so they're contacting Republicans and these are becoming political stories. It's got to stop, but it won't because unfortunately this shit works for Republicans. So uh, we'll see if it works for Ganahl here. 
Up yours. Up yours. Up yours. Sons of bitches. 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 Woke moralism. Woke moralism. Woke moralism. I dreamed I saw my maternal grandmother. She was stroking herself absentmindedly. I let her have her way. Genital region was exposed. I let her have her way.